Okay, alright everyone, so welcome to our first lesson for our uh, for statistic. So I hope that for those that you have a printer at home, you already print out the handouts because I think it will save you a lot of time like copying. So but if you don't have a printer at home, then you might need to like maybe refer to your phone or if you want to copy, then feel free to do so. Okay. So now we'll go through every part together and fill in the blanks and do the question together in the handout itself. Okay, so we are going into the first chapter. So 5.1 meaning is paper 5 and then topic 1, representation of data. So today we'll be focusing on only one learning outcome, which is to understand and use different measure of central tendency, which is mean, median, mode and variation, which is range interquartile range and standard deviation and we need to uh, do some comparison for the sets of the data okay so first of all before we continue before we go into the learning objective then let's go through some very easy introduction for statistic first so in statistic there are two types of data so the first one is the data that you actually describe with words and is non-numerical so for this type of data we will call it as qualitative data okay so meaning this kind of data you cannot measure it you cannot count it so for this type of data normally is categorical so categorical data meaning like something that you can actually put into category so maybe like for example what is the color then what is the blood type and etc okay so the next one is the data that can be counted or measured by numerical value so the opposite of qualitative data it will be quantitative data Okay, so for quantitative data, there are two types under quantitative data. The first one is called as distinct. Sorry, distinct data. So distinct data meaning that it's a data that you can actually count. For, so for example, like number of students in a class or number of cars that one family own. Or like it's like normally something that you can count with a real number so that will be distinct data and all your data will be in like whole number form only so basically it's like something that you can count like one two three four five and so on okay so the second one is the data that you can measure up to a certain degree of accuracy it can be any value within a range so for example height weight, time, length. So this type of data, we'll call it as continuous data. So for continuous data, right, normally this kind of data is something that uh, it allows decimal. So meaning like when we talk about height, right, we normally don't say like it's one meter, two meter, then normally we will have value like 1.5, 1.25 and so on. So this type of data is called as continuous data. Okay, so after the brief introduction for this one, uh, I mean, of course, in statistics, we learn about sample, we learn about population and so on, but there will be like more focus in like P, uh, your statistic too. So I'm not going to talk about that to like not confuse you. So it just like focus on the thing that actually in our syllabus itself. Okay, and uh, I mean, if we need it in the future, then I'll be explaining about that. Okay, so we should we go into the main point for today's lesson, so which is measure of central tendency. Okay, measure of central tendency, right? When we talk about central tendency, normally we use this measure to describe the average value of a set of data. So you just remember the word average. So there are three measures that we can use to describe the average. So the first one is the value in the middle of an order set of data. So this value, we call it as median. Okay, median is the value in the middle of an order set of data. So later, later we will be looking at some example. So now it's just like introduction to you first. Okay, so the second one is the second average that we are going to learn is the most commonly occurring num number. So which is called mode. 
Okay, so mod M O D E. Okay, so the last one is the sum of all the values divided by the number of values. So this is the normal average that we count. So this number we call it as mean. Okay, we don't call it as average because like these three actually represent average is just like in what kind of average you want to find so that's why the normal average that we use in daily life we call it as mean okay so for this three type then now we are going to write down what is the formula for mean here okay i think it's very simple like if i have something like one two one two three four five so if you want to find out the average and what you will do you will plus all the number together and divide by how many number you have right so for ungrouped data meaning is like what i say just now you will plus one two three four five together then you divide by five then the first formula that we are going to use here will be mean equal to okay so the symbol for mean will be x bar so this is mean okay so for ungrouped data mean actually equals to sum of x okay so the meaning of this symbol is actually means sum of okay so if we talk about a data set with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then sum of your data will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and so on. Okay, so just now we 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we divide by 5, right, because you have 5 value. So in symbol, we will call it as n. So basically, n is like how many number of value you have. So number of value you have in the set. Okay, later we'll be using this in example, so don't worry about that. Okay, second one is for group data. Group data is something that you actually put everything in an organized way, normally in a table. So in that case, meaning like you already count like how many one you have, how many two you have and so on. So for this type of group data, then the formula for me, it will be equals to sum of x times f divide by sum of f okay so the same thing the symbol the sigma here actually means sum of and then what is f so x is basically data okay x is basically your data f here is basically your frequency so frequency like how many times this data actually occur in the data itself okay so don't worry later we are going to look at some example how to use this okay Okay, alright, so now we will be looking at some of the examples, how to find mean, mode, and median. Okay, so this one is actually quite easy because I think it's something that is quite common sense, so you shouldn't have any problem with this. Okay, so let's see. So the first one, you have a set of values, 7, 6, 7, 5, 6, 8, 5, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so when you want to find the mean, so you remember... So this is uh, basically something that you see a random number which they didn't write down like how many 7 that you have and so on. Normally this type of data is basically ungrouped data because they didn't give you any frequency. I mean of course if you want to find that then you can uh, create your table yourself but yeah I mean we don't need to do that. Okay so to find out the mean. Okay so we start from the mean. Mean x bar will be equals to sum of x divide by n okay so sum of x x meaning our data so sum of the data meaning we need to plus all the number together so 7 plus 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 6 plus 8 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 okay then everything we will need to divide by how many number you have okay so in this case we'll be dividing okay so how many number you have here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so ten number okay then after that you plus them together and you should be able to get 68 divided by 10 which gives you 6.8 is it all right so i think this is quite easy it's basically finding the average and yeah like what call like uh, how to find the average for normal question that you have. 
Okay, so plus everything divide by how many number you have. Okay, second one, we need to find out the mode. Okay, so for the mode is the most commonly occurring value. So meaning which number that is most frequent in your data set. So that's why when you look at this data, you can see there are 2, 5, 2, 6, and there are set 3, 7. So that's why your mode will be 7. So basically, it's like what is the number that the frequency is highest, okay? Which is the number that uh, occurring most of the time. Okay, so mode is 7, just like that. Okay, now median. Okay, so this is something that we need to be aware. Okay. So for median, right, every time when you want to find median, you must make sure that your data set must be in ascending order, meaning that you must arrange it from smallest to greatest. Okay, so in this case, then let's try to, yeah, if you already write something here, then maybe you can write your number beside that. Okay, so you have 2, 5, then 2, 6, 3, 7, and then eight eight nine okay so this is how i arrange my value okay so after i arrange now what is mean so mean is the value in the middle of an order set of data so middle so you have 10 number right so where is the middle so the first method that you can do is just count i think that one is a common sense so this is the last number, then after that I go to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. So the middle is actually in between here. So that's why for in between that meaning we need to find the midpoint. So in this case, your median will be equals to 7 plus 7 divided by 2, which actually gives you 7 also. Okay, so the other way that you can actually do this is, I think for this type of question, it's still not going to be like, uh, make any difference, but then this method will be very helpful when you have group data later. Okay, so, or the other way of doing median is like this. Okay, so you have a set of data, right? So median meaning half. So half meaning like 1 over 2. So what we're trying to do is n over 2. Okay, so how many data do you have? In this case, you have a 10. So 10 divided by 2, you actually get 5. Okay, so something that you need to be careful here. Okay, if you get a whole number, you need to take the midpoint with that particular number and the next number. Meaning that if I get 5 right, it tells me that the answer is the midpoint between my 5th number and my 6th number. Is that okay? If you get an integer, your answer will be the midpoint for that integer and the next integer. So for this one, it's like the midpoint between the 5 and 6 numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is my 5th number, this is my 6th number. So that's why my answer in the middle. So that's why it's the same, 7 over 7 divided by 2, I get 7. So this is another way to do this. Okay, so okay, later we will try to do the other question also. Okay. So question B, you can try to do this. Okay, yeah, you can try your own uh, first and then after that check your answer. But I think it will be helpful if you can check out the, the part for median later. So we are going to look at like median, if let's say you don't get an integer here, then what do you need to do? Okay, so maybe for this part, you can, yeah, if you need, you can fast forward it or so on. And yeah, I'm going to arrange my number first. Okay. So to make everything easier. Okay, so after you arrange this right, yeah, I'm going to show you if you want to group the data yourself, then what you can do and what is the meaning of this one also. Okay, so when you want to find the mean, then normally we say the sum of everything we plus together, right? So for the first few time, I recommend you to like write down the formula because... I mean, this is like the normal like introduction question that actually 
help you to understand what is the concept but later when we move on to the question that is not like finding a mean more median than your uh, understanding the formula will be something that is very important when you want to solve the question okay so instead of doing everything plus together you can see there are 275 276 and 277 so what we can try to do is let's do multiply yeah so that is 174 so it's okay you just write 74 so instead of writing 75 plus 75 then why not you do 2 times 75 and then 2 times 76 and then 2 times 77 and then plus 79 plus 84 then divided by number that you have 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 Okay, now use your calculator and you should be getting 693 divided by 9 which gives you a mean 77. Okay, then yeah, so you get your mean already. So this is actually what is mean by this, like you put the frequency together with the number that you want then you times them together meaning that you actually have 275 so instead of writing 75 plus 75 actually you write 2 times 75 okay so yeah let's do mode so from here you can see that it's actually 174 179 1 here then everything here is 2 so 3 of them are all mode so you need to write down all 75 76 and 77 Okay, next one, let's go to median. Okay, so yeah, we're going to show this like with the easier way first. It's not like the easier way, like, like the common sense way. So last number, second, third, fourth. So this is in the middle. So that's why 76. Okay, so if you are using the formula method just now, so you can see all. So we do the same thing, n divided by 2. So the n here, like how many number you have is 9, right? So 9 over 2 equals to 4.5. Okay, so now you see, just now we get a whole number. Now it's not the whole number. If you didn't get a whole number, meaning your answer is the, num the next whole number after your decimal. So meaning that 4.5, the next whole number will be 5. So my answer will be the fifth value. Okay, so my median is, then you count the fifth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 76, which is the same answer with this. So meaning that for this point, like if you get any integer, uh, sorry, if you get any decimal here, then your answer will be the place that actually the first whole number after the decimal that you have found. So meaning that if you have 3.75, that means you are getting the fourth value. So if you have 2.2, then you are getting 3 or so. So it's not like rounding off, like it's like no matter it's more than 0 0.5 or not, you are still getting the next whole number. Okay, just like that. Okay, so later you will realize that this method is very helpful if we deal with something with table because you are not going to write everything out and you cannot check which one is the middle. Okay, so now we are going to see the group data. Okay, so group data meaning that they actually didn't give you the data like in raw, they put it into a table already. So the meaning of the table will be like, so you can see number of children, number of families, so meaning that there's one family that without any children, one family with one children, three family with two children, six family with three children, four family with four children, and so on. So this is basically the X. And this is basically the F, so meaning the frequency. So like for this data, if I'm going to write it out, that means that I will actually write the data, not the frequency. So meaning that I have 1, 0, then I have 1, 1, then I'm going to write 3 times 2, then I'm going to write 6 times of 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, three. then 4, 4, 4, 4, then 5, 5. So in, if the data is going to like give me in this way, okay? So now since it's a group data mean that we don't need to like do plus all the way, then what we can try to do is we straight away use the formula to do that. Okay. So mean 
equals to fx divided by sum of f. Okay, then now, so yeah, sorry, xf uh, is the same now, 2 times 3, 3 times 2 is the same. Sorry, I'm like more getting used to like, writing f first. Okay, but the idea is the same. Okay, so the data, then now I have 1, 0, I have 1, 1. I have 3, 2, I have 6, 3, I have 4, 4, and I have 2, 5. Is that alright? Okay, I think it actually making sense, right? So yeah, it's just I multiply them together and then divide by sum of frequency. So many frequency, sum of frequency, so you plus all your frequency together. Okay, then you can use your calculator and you'll be getting 51 over 17 which gives you 3. So this number basically telling you like in average, the family has an average of 3 children. Like most of the family has like average 3 children. Okay, so that's the main part. Okay, so for the mode, so most occurring, so meaning that you look at the frequency, the highest is 6 meaning that if you are writing everything out you will you will have 6 3 okay meaning like 3 3 3 3 3 3 so remember your answer is not the frequency is the data that has the highest frequency so that's why in this case it's going to be 3 okay so because of 6 highest frequency the data is 3 then after that median Okay, so just now I said already, it will be easier for us to do this because, yeah, you wouldn't want to write down everything like one, uh, 0, then 1, then 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4. I mean, of course you can do that, but I mean, this one you are still having 17 data. Like, imagine if you are having a thousand, then are you going to write everything out like a thousand numbers? So it's like uh quite impossible so that's why it's something that very important here that i'm going to teach here which is called the big f so this is basically called cumulative frequency so cumulative frequency is like the frequency that actually accumulated so meaning like uh the idea is like this okay the first one will follow the small f so meaning one okay then the next one you will plus together to the new frequency 2 so the idea for fre cumulative frequency is like there is one family with one children there are two family with one children and below and there are then you plus 3 again you get 5 so there are five family with two children or below then you have 11 family that has three children and below then you have 15 family with 4 children and below. Then 17 has 5 or below. Okay? Or like basically when you're writing this, then you can know that. Like for the first number that you are going to write, if you order everything, if you write down your uh, data in order, right? So your first number will be 0. Your second number will be 1. The third number, the fourth number, the fifth number will be 2. And the sixth number, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh will be 3. And for 15, that meaning for from 12 to 15, it will be all 4. Then from 16 to 17, it will be all 5. Uh, I hope that you can understand the idea. But yeah, okay, maybe for the first time, I'll try to write down that you can try to understand. Okay. If I'm trying to write everything in uh in this way, right? Meaning I will have actually that's one zero, so zero one, and then I have three two, so two two two, three 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 three, four 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 four, and then two five. So this is my seventeen number. So cumulative frequency meaning that the first number is two. Then after the first number, meaning when I go to the second number, I get 5. I get 2, sorry. So the 2 here. Okay, so what does that mean by 5? So meaning like from the... Okay, this is for my 1, 2. So 5 meaning... Yeah, from here to here. From here to here, it's like 5. 
So meaning the third number, the fourth number, the fifth number will be okay. I'm not writing in this way. Okay, maybe we do like that. So you get one meaning cumulative for here is one, two, and then you have five. And then 11, right? So 3 is... Okay, for 3 is... Sorry, 11. For 4 is 15. For 5 is 17. Okay, so that's basically meaning like for the first place is going to be 1, then second place is going to be 1. Then for the third, the third, the fourth, the fifth is all 2. Then from the 6th place up to the 11th place is going to be 3. Then after 11 is going to be 12, right? So 12 up to 15th place is going to be 4. Then after that, 16, 17 is going to be 5. Okay, just like that. Then we are going to use this to help us to find median. Okay, so how are we going to do that? So we do the same thing like what we have done just now. Okay, so n over 2. So the number that I have here is 17, right? So number of value mean total frequency. So 2, then what do I get? So 17 divided by 2, I'll be getting 8.5. Okay, so if I get a number that is not a whole number, then meaning that I should get the next whole number. So meaning it's 9. So the 9 value here. So just now we say that this is like the... Cumulative frequency tells us where's the value, right? So when you look at this frequency, uh, cumulative frequency, the 9 value actually, where is it? So you see, up to the 5th place is going to be 2. Then from the 6th place to 11th place is going to be 3. So that's why the 9th value for my data will be at 3. So that's why my median is 3. Is that alright? Yeah, we'll be looking at some more examples. Okay, so let's continue the next one. Okay, so same thing. We are still doing the same thing for D. So if you want to fast forward, you can. I think for the mean part, it should be no problem already. So I'm just going to do this like uh, very quick for the mean. Okay, so 5 times 5, 6 times 5, 7, 6, 8, 4. Divide by. So remember, this is total like sum of frequency, so do not take the data and plus them, so it's the frequency. Okay, and you will be getting 1, 2, 9 over 20. So it will give you 6.45. Okay, is that alright? Yeah, I think for me it's pretty uh, straightforward. Okay, then after that it's going to be mode. Okay, highest frequency, 7. Okay, settle. Then after that, the next one, median. So remember, whenever you want to do median, then you need to write down your cumulative frequency first. Okay, so in this case, it starts with 5. So we start with 5. Then 5 plus 5 give you 10. 10 plus 6, 16. Then 20. Okay, then after you find this, then yeah. Okay, when you do your cumulative frequency, right, you can actually check that whether your last number is the total or not. So if the 20 is not your total frequency, that means you might do, uh, you might like making some mistake in your question itself. Okay, so median here, so same thing, n over 2, so here is 20 over 2, which gives you 10. So if you get a whole number, meaning that it's going to be midpoint between your 10 number and the 11 number. Okay, if you get integer, it's straight away that value, that particular value for the whole number that after your decimal. So if you get a whole number, then it's going to be midpoint for that particular place and the next place. So for this one, yeah, you can see for the 10 place, what is the value? The 10 is actually 6, correct? 
but for the 11 it's actually go to 7 already so the midpoint between the 10 value and the 11 value will be 6 plus 7 divided by 2 and you get 6.5 is that alright? yeah so meaning like for here the first to the fifth value is 5 the 6th value to the 10th value is 6, the 11th value to the 16th value is 7. So that's why the 10th value is 6, the 11th value is 7. So that's why we use 6 plus 7 divided by 2 and we get the number. Okay? Alright, so now we are looking at the next question. Find the mean, the model class and the median class for each of the group data. Okay. So for this one, right, uh, there's something different here is that before that we only like deal with like distinct data, meaning that everything is like a whole number, but now you are having a range. So uh, what you are trying to do is the first thing that you need to do is you need to find out the midpoint because when we want to find mean, right, it's like how do I know that the range between 15 to 19, which number should I take? So that's why we need to find out the midpoint. Okay, so the midpoint actually is very easy. So meaning that you take the upper uh, lower limit and the upper limit, you plus them together and divide by 2. And that's your midpoint. Yeah, it's like the mid value. La. Okay, so midpoint 15 plus 19 divided by 2 give you 17. 20 plus 24 divided by 2 give you 22. 25 plus 29 divided by 2 gives you 27 and keep on doing that and you should be getting all this value. Okay, then after that the same thing like since we need to do this then maybe we can do that first. Okay, cumulative frequency 6, 13, 28, 34, 42, 43 and 45. Okay. So if the question actually give you like uh, the total number of worker, then when you do this, you must check that whether the last number for your cumulative frequency is your total number, okay? Or if you want to check, then you can use your calculator to plus everything together and see whether you get 45 or not. Okay, so to find mean, so same thing. So I'll try to write down the formula maybe. Okay, so now we can start to do it. So remember, it's the midpoint times the frequency, okay? Not the cumulative frequency. So that's 6, 17, 13, 22, 28, 27, and sorry, I don't have space here, so can I skip this step? You should able to continue to write, right? I'm just going to write the last one, which is you have 2, Oops, sorry, do I do something wrong? Yeah, you see, I did a mistake here also. I'm sorry, I used the cumulative frequency. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, we have 6, 7, and then 7, 22. Yeah, so this is the good mistake show, so you don't do that also. So 15, 27, plus, and so on. Okay, plus the last one is the 8 for 40, sorry, 2 for 47. Okay? So, yeah, please you don't do like this, okay? Yeah, because I'm using this pen, so yeah, it's like, my space is very limited here. Okay, so, uh, total frequency, so the frequency plus together, or you can take your last free, uh, last cumulative frequency if you're already sure that it's something that is correct. Okay, so for this one, you'll be getting 1, 2, 8, 5 divided by 45, and then equals to 28.6. Okay, so that's your mean. Okay, then after that, you see that's model class. So why uh, we don't call it mode? Because we don't have an exactly value that is like, show us the highest frequency. That's the, the, the one that shown to us is only like the model class. So that's why the class that with the highest frequency. So this is the highest frequency and the class will be 25 to 29. Okay, so that's the model class. So the same thing for median class also. Uh, there's actually a long formula to find out the median, but that is not covered in your syllabus for S1, so that's why we are don't we don't cover that. We just learn how to find the median class. So it's the same thing. So if you want to find median class, then do the n divided by two also. So your n here is forty five. Who is the one that keeps having my 
team okay 45 divided by 2 equals 2 so 45 divided by 2 you get 22.5 so this answer is a decimal so it's going to be the next whole number so 23rd sorry 23rd value so for this one where is your 23rd value so from 14 to 28 is going to be 25 to 29 so that's why median class 25 to 29 okay so the last example here okay so same thing start to find your midpoint start to find your big f Uh, in the exam, actually, if the question asks you to find mean and so on, right, it will be good if you can write down like midpoint and then you just write down all your midpoint and write down your frequency and so on. I mean, this is exercise, so you can just do like beside the table is all right. But in the exam, make sure that everything you must write in the answer space instead of like the table itself, okay? So 0 plus 10 divided by 2. 15 plus 20 divided by 2, 20 plus 30 divided by 2, and so on. Okay, so cumulative frequency, then plus array 5, 7, 14, 18, and then 24. Okay, then I start with the mean. Okay, so this is pretty easy, so I'm just going to do this. So please make sure that you do it also so yeah you don't feel like boring. Okay, that's five five again uh use the frequency so seven Okay, divide by number of students, the cumulative frequency. So you should be getting 640 divided by 24, which gives you 26.7. So for this case, it's going to be minute. Lah. Yeah, so if you want to write down then the, yeah, the answer that you get is actually following the answer of your data. Okay, so model class, okay, highest frequency, then write down the class. So the highest frequency here is 7 and then the class is 20 to 30. Okay, so median. So same thing, n over 2. So your n is 24. Over 2, you are getting 12. So if you get a whole number, then what should you do? Yeah, so if you get a whole number, then you should be taking the number at the place and the next one. Okay, so you are taking the 12th number and the 13th number plus them and divide by 2. So where's the 12th number? The 12th number is actually at 20, the, this and the 13th number is also here. So that's why 20 to 30. Okay, that's like just class lah. Okay, so yeah, that's all for the measure of central tendency part. So later we'll be looking at measure of variation or dispersion. So so let's continue with the second part of our lesson, which is measure of variation or dispersion. Okay, so just now we learned three measures for central tendency. So, uh, I mean, if we have the measure of central tendency, then why do we need a measure of variation? Okay, so now let's look at this. Okay, you can read through yourself. So a uh, measure of central tendency is not enough to summarize a set of data. So it tells us about the averages, meaning by using mean, median, or mode. But even though a set of data having the same mean, median, or mode, but the data can be like completely different. Okay, so for example, let's look at this scenario. So if you are having this, right? Okay, so can you try to find out the mean for the butter A and the mean for butter B? Okay, so this is the score that they actually score in a baseball contest. So yeah, let's find out the mean. Okay, for A, the mean is actually, yeah, so same thing, plus all your data together.
one two three four five six seven eight so you have a total of eight data okay and you are getting two two four divide by eight which is equals to twenty eight okay so we do the same thing for B So it seems like you get the same thing also, 224 divided by 8, which gives you 28. Okay, so after finding your mean, okay, second thing, they ask you to compare the mean. So what can you get? So yeah, so basically your butter A and B have the same mean. Okay, but the question now become like this. So now if between A and B and you're going to choose one butter for a baseball contest, so which one you will choose? So since that they actually have the same mean like so-called average and then but you have two choices here by looking at this set of data actually which one will you choose for a baseball contest? Okay, so maybe you will choose for, I think it's quite obvious that you will choose for butter A. Okay, why is that? Because the performance for this butter is actually more consistent. So yeah, the score is more consistent. Meaning like the performance of, of this butter is like more consistent if compared to butter B. So you can see although they have the same mean, but then, but based on this data, you can see that for this one, the range is like, the minimum that his score is at 24 but the maximum is at 31 but for butter b the max although he score like 104 but you can see a lot of it is like 0 1 2 and 3 so that's why you will uh, you might be going for butter a because the score is more consistent it's more consistent okay so why what is the measure that actually can help us to find out how consistent a set of data? So this set of data can actually be indicated by a measure of variation, which is actually the thing that we are going to learn. So this measure of variation actually show how spread out a set of data value. So with the same thing with central tendency, you have medium mode and mean. But for measure of variation, we have range, interquartile range, and then the last one is called as standard deviation. Okay, so for this one, it's going to be like uh, much more no it's not difficult but it's just like it needs more explanation so we'll be discussing this part separately like one session for range and interquartile range and the second part for standard deviation okay so now look at the first one we are going to talk a uh, measure of variation dispersion one which we talk about range and interquartile range Okay, so let's write down some of the important concepts that we are going to learn here. Okay, so the first one, the difference between the largest and the smallest data, it indicates the spread of the value. Okay, so the first one, we call it as range. Okay, so basically how do you find range is basically the maximum value minus the minimum value. So this is what is that mean by the difference between the largest and the smallest data. Okay, so it shows you how spread your data is, so meaning that like the case just now, right, for butter A, the range is like basically the minimum you are having 24, then the highest is like 31. But for butter B, you have the minimum at 0, then the highest is like 104, so that's why the spread is like bigger if you have a, a large number of range. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, second thing. Quartiles are value which divide a set of data in order into four equal parts. So Q1 is the symbol for first quartile. Okay, or we call it as the lower quartile. Okay, they means the same thing. Oops, sorry. Okay, 
it indicates 25% of the total number of observation has value less than this number. So mean that when we cut, I mean, if you have like 1 to 100, okay, yeah, let's say like 1 to 100, then my Q1 will be at 25, meaning that I have 1 over 4, or like 25% of this total number is smaller than 25. So this is what is that mean by the first quartile. Okay, Q2 is basically the second quartile. So second quartile actually indicates the 50% of the total number of observation has this value less and this number is also the media observation. So I just now when we talk about 1 to 100, so meaning our second quartile will be at 50. So meaning 50% 50 of the value itself actually less than 50. And when you realize this, right, it's actually the totally same, the exactly same idea that we learned previously for the central tendency, which is median. Okay, so Q2 is also the median, it's the same thing. Okay, Q3 is the third quartile. or is called as upper quartile. Okay, it actually indicates 75% of the total number of observation have value less than this number, meaning like if you have 1 to 100, meaning that your third quartile will be at 75, like 70% 70 of your set of your number is actually less than your Q3, which is 75. Okay, so the last one, the difference, so what is the concept that we give for the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile? So this is basically what is that mean by interquartile range. Okay, or in short, we call IQR. Alright, interquartile range, so IQR. So how do we find this? The difference between upper quartile and lower quartile, so which means Q3 minus Q1. So for you to find interquartile range, you need to find Q3 and Q1, then only you can find your interquartile range. So this interquartile range actually indicates the spread of the middle 50% of your value because like it's the spread between your Q1 and your Q3. So it's like the middle 50%. Okay, so we look at the example here. So something that we need to bear in mind here is like for uh, group data that you are putting everything in a class interval, so meaning like you have 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15. For that kind of data, for you to find median Q1, Q3, then we will use graphical approach with it, which is using a cumulative frequency graph. That part will be covered in the last, ne next lesson, so you won't be doing that for this lesson yet, okay? So yeah. A. Find the range and the interquartile range for each of the following set of the data. So when we talk about range, then it's pretty straightforward, meaning that the maximum value minus the minimum value, in this case, the maximum value is 25, and then minus the smallest value is 2, so your range is 23. So meaning the spread of your value, like how spread your value are is actually like, the maximum, the difference between the maximum and the minimum is like 23. Okay, so the same thing, if uh, you remember when you want to find the median, what is the thing that you must make sure your data, yeah, your data must be in a uh, other way, so like from smallest to biggest. So that's why it's the same thing, we need to arrange it. So yeah, I purposely leave the space here for you to like rearrange them together. So you will get 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 12, 13, 17, and 25. Okay, so yeah, try to arrange yourself. Lah. Okay, so interquartile range. So the first method, so let me copy that first. Okay, so the first method is basically using the method that we said, like just using common sense to do this. So, last, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then this one is the middle, which is your median, right? Okay, so after your median, right, you actually separate your 
set of data into two sides so this is the midpoint so meaning that i have this set of data here and this set of data here so then you do the same thing again so because q1 is basically like if i cut my data into like first 50 percent then the 25 percent is actually the half of the 50 percent so that's why one two three four five and the middle is at five so this is my q1 okay so the same thing, if this is my midpoint, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then my Q3 will be at 13. Okay, so that's why my interquartile range will be Q3, sorry, IQR equals to Q3 minus Q1, which is 13 minus 5, which gives me 8. Okay, so that's the method 1, so by looking at it. Okay, so method 2 is the same thing that we have. Uh, did just we have done just now also for median but for median we use n over 2 right because we want to find the half so for q1 then you need to do n over 4 and for q3 you need to do 3n over 4 so let's see this okay so method 2 so for me to find q1 then i will use n over 4 so how many number do i have here so two 4, 6, 8, then 11. Okay, so 11 over 4, which will give me 5.5. .5. So you remember, if you get a number that is decimal, meaning that it's going to be, yeah, the first whole number then after that. So meaning the 6th value. So what is your 6th value here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is 9. So Q1 is 9. Okay, then after that, for Q3, it's going to be 75%, so 3 over 4. So 3n over 4, 3 times 11 divided by 4, which gives you uh, 8.25. Okay, so the first number after 8.25 is going to be 9 value. So to find out at the 9th place, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 13. So that's why you see the number that you actually get is the same. Oops, did I do something wrong here? Oh yeah, Q3 minus Q1. So this is, yeah, this is 5, correct? Uh, why is this? Oh, sorry. Okay, 11 divided by 4 is actually 2.75. So this is the third value. I'm sorry. So 1, 2, 3. So your Q1 should be 5. Okay, so the same thing goes to IQR will be equals to Q3 minus Q1 which gives you 13 minus 5 also which is 8. Okay, so this is how do you use the method 2 to find the answer. Okay, so yeah, let's move on. Okay, so for B, so let's do the same thing, then you can try to find your range. Okay, so yeah, maybe you can try to arrange the number first. Okay, so yeah, it depends on you whether you want to use like by looking at it or you want to use the n over 4 method. So you are going to get the same answer. So I'm just showing here. Okay, let's find the range first. Okay, biggest value 70 minus 10, 60. Okay, then after that, if you are using the formula method so n over 4 so here you have 9 okay which will give you 9 divided by 4 is going to be oops I left out a number 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 what is the number that I didn't write 50 52 70 sorry okay so i have a 10 number here so 10 divided by 4 gives me 2.5 
and then when you get a decimal it's going to be the next number so it's the third number okay so the third number here is basically 15 okay then after that 3n over 4 3 times 10 over 4 which I will get 7.5 so 7.5 meaning the 8 value okay so my Q3 is the 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so which is 50 okay so my IQR equals to Q3 minus Q1 which is 50 minus 15 equals to 35 okay so now maybe we can use slide by looking at it and check so you have 10 value right so 1 2 3 4 5 so the midpoint is here in between 40 and 45 so if this is your midpoint that means that it's going to cut your value into five number in front five number behind so that's why your q1 is here and your q2 is going to be here sorry q3 okay so by looking at it you can find the answer also okay number c yeah okay you can try to do it yourself i'm going to write down the answer then you check it by your own 13 then your iqr should be equals to 13.5 minus Okay, so I think you need to be a little bit more careful for this one because I think the if you are using this method then you are getting a whole number then the answer is actually the midpoint between the place. It's not going to be like the exact value. Okay, so find out this yourself. Okay, so for D, the same thing, I'm going to try out one for you then after that you try to do another one yourself. Okay. So for D, your range. So same thing, if you have this, then you need to do big F. Okay, so 5, 9, 11, 12, 15. Okay, then after that we can start. So range is going to be the same thing, but make sure that it's not the frequency, okay? The biggest value here for your data, so it's going to be 5 and 1. So range is 5 minus 1, which gives you 4. Okay, then after that, yeah, let's try to do this with the formula because I'm not going to write everything up to, I mean, this 50 is still okay. Like this one is going to be a little bit difficult for you to write everything up. Okay, so yeah, so if we want to find Q1, then we put N over 4. Okay, so your uh, total number is 15. So 15 over 4, okay, gives you 3.75. So the next number, so it's going to be the fourth number. So the fourth number will be at, yeah, 1. So Q1 equals to 1. Okay, then 3n over 4 equals to 3 times 15 divided by 4, which will give you 11.25. So yeah, this is a decimal. So next whole number is the 12th value. So where's your 12th value? Yeah, so from 6 to 9 will be here. From 10, 11 will be here. Then the 12th is here. So Q3 is 12. Hey, sorry, it's not 12. It's 4. Okay, the place 12. But the value is 4. Okay, so after you have find out this answer, so your IQR basically equals to 4 minus 1 which gives you 3 okay so try to do the same thing for E also I'm going to write down the answer for you so the range for this one will be equals to 40 and then your IQR here will be equals to 40 minus 20 which gives you 20 okay I hope it's not too hard for you to capture this idea so later for our next one we'll be looking at standard deviation Okay, so let's continue for the next one, which is the part 2 for measure of variation, which we talk about variance and standard deviation. So don't worry, it's something that maybe you didn't learn before, but yeah, it's going to, it's not going to be like very difficult. Okay, 
So deviation refers to the difference between an observation and the data mean. So since the mean is a central value of the observation, so deviation is actually a measurement to measure how close or how far the observation is from the mean. Okay, so we're going to write down the concept first. Okay, the average of the square differences of all observation from the mean. So this is called variance. Okay, second one, a numerical measurement of how spread out the set of data is, is the square root of variance. So this is standard deviation. Okay, so I'm going to do some uh, clearer explanation here so you understand actually what is going on here. Okay, so when we talk about variance, I just put that aside first. So yeah, just listen to this, then after that you decide yourself. So what is the notes that you might want to take it out here? But yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, this part is basically like telling you why. So if you are not, uh, okay, I'll encourage you to like go through once. But if you cannot understand or you find it like very difficult for you, then I mean the formula part will be like will be like the one that will be more useful for you but it will be good if you can understand like uh, why are we using this okay so let's say so you ask like since we already have measure of variation just now which we use the range and interquartile range so why do we still need variation and standard deviation since we already have that okay so let's say I give you one example here I have uh, one 2, 3, 4, eh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, let's say this is my set of values. So where is my median? My median is going to be in the center of five and 4 and 5, right? This is my median. And I cut this into two parts. So my Q1 is here my q3 is here correct i cut it in here so four number in between here in between here okay so what will be my uh iqr my interquartile range is might be going to be 6.5 in the middle the middle here minus 2.5 which gives me four okay now what if let's say instead of writing it here i change this value into 8,000 so my question is is the interquartile range still the same I mean yes because 8,000 is still the biggest number here and when you arrange it in order it's still going to be the same order and you are still having the same Q1 and Q3 but then now your value actually become 8,000 already so interquartile range only check for us like the how spread the data is for the middle 50 va uh 50 percent of the value so the problem that you might having is you cannot identify the extreme value meaning that uh out of the 50 percent if i have a very big number at the end or at the front then the answer that actually I get for IQR is like I'm trying to ignore that part, I only focus in the 50%. So that's why if I change it to 8000, then I'm still getting IQR, but that actually didn't give me a overall image on what, uh, what kind of data is this. So that's why we need the other measurement, which is like more accurate, that tell us like how far or how close the observation is from the main. Okay, so yeah, let's put this aside. Okay, so let's say now, if I have a set of data, which is 0, 2, 5, 7, and 11. Okay, I have this set of data. So if I want to find out in average how far is all this point from the mean then what should i do okay so maybe i think for us to make the process easier maybe we find out the mean first okay so the mean will be equals to 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 11 
so divide by 5 so which will give you 25 divided by 5 which is 5 so the mean is 5 so if we change the question then it will be how far is all this value from 5 which is the mean from your the mean for your data okay so how can we do that so of course we will want to find out what's the difference first okay so for us to find out then we will use every data here minus the mean correct so we can find out like how far the distance is so 0 minus 5 i get negative 5 2 minus 5 i get negative 3 5 minus 5 i get 0 7 minus 2 i uh, 7 minus 5 i get 2 11 minus 5 i get a 6 okay so after I find this right, if I straight away plus everything together and I divide by, okay, so let's say when I negative 5 plus negative 3, I get negative 8 plus 0, negative 8 plus 2, negative 6 plus 6, I get 0. So is the distance between all this value to the mean is 0? I don't think so because it's not like all the value is 5, then you can say that the distance between your value and the mean is 5 uh, is 0 but then now exactly you can see like there is some distance here but because of you are having some negative value and you add them together then it's trying to be like make it a balance in the op uh, negative side and the positive side so that's why if we can't do that then what should we do okay like normally then what the first thing that you might be thinking of is like yeah we try to do modulus so when you try to do modulus that means that i try to like ignore the negative part so i'm changing everything to positive part then i'm going to find that okay i mean that's uh one of the method that you can actually do it but actually modulus is not so comprehensive if you want to try to do this like in calculation or in like modeling part so that's why the other way of trying to changing every negative to positive is we try to square every number so instead of doing absolute value then we try to square our number so i can get what is the positive distance in square so 25 9 0 4 36 so this is how i change every value to be positive so if i want to find in average how far is all the observation of my data from my mean then what will i do yeah i will use the distance that I can find, I add them all together, correct? So sum, divide by how many number I have. So like how many distance I'm counting. So here I have 5 value. Okay, then what will I do? 25 plus 9 plus 0 plus 4 plus 36 divide by 5. Okay, which will give me 14.8. Okay, so my question now, is this the exact value like how far your observation from the mean no yeah why because this is the number that you actually squared just now so that's why if we want to find the exact distance then what do we need to do we need to do square root for 14.8 and then we get 3.75 which is yeah when you see this one yeah it's like the average that is like 3.85 for the average distance like how close the observation from your mean okay so i think you can understand this part right yeah so if you can understand this part yeah it's pretty easy so the thing that we actually did at the first one this is actually called variance okay so you see the average of squared difference of all observation from the mean so actually what you are doing is like you are using the observation to minus the mean and then you squat the difference then you divide by 5 so that that's the average so that's why this is basically variance the second one when you try to do square root so what is the square root of variance so this is called standard deviation okay i think it's quite easy right okay so now i want you to write down your formula in the other next page of your uh, notes here okay so for ungrouped data your variance here okay uh sorry maybe i need to put it here then you can see 
Okay, so for ungroup data, which is the data that we are having here, okay, the variation, eh, sorry, the variance will be equals to, so what we're trying to do just now is like the sum of everything for the observation minus the mean, right? So x minus the mean square divide by how many number you have. Okay, so what is standard deviation? Oops, I'm sorry, I need to write down the symbol. Okay, the symbol for variance is sigma square. Okay, it's like a symbol like this. Okay, sigma square. So for standard deviation, since the variation va variance is sigma square, so standard deviation is sigma. So sigma basically equals to square root of your variance. Okay, or if we write it in full, then it will be square root for your whole formula here. Is that okay? Okay, so for group data, so it will be the exactly same thing, but you need to times with the frequency and your total number of data, you need to change it to the total frequency. So variance, sigma square equals to, okay, so writing the same thing, but after that, you need to times with your frequency divide by total frequency okay so same thing standard deviation equals to square root for your variance okay yeah if you're lazy to write that then you just write sigma square okay then yeah the same thing square root the whole formula Okay, so now my question is, when you look at this, right, so it's actually quite, you look at this one, like, uh, after you do everything, it's going to be like a very short, because you already do all the working for this part, like, you already build a table, then you do that, then you find out the answer, but if, let's say, uh, the question gives you something like that, are you going to work out, like, this long to get this answer? Okay. So let's say, okay, you see, right, this is the value, this is the table, right? If I don't want to build this table, then what do I need to do? I will actually need to do, to find my variance. Okay, I put down the, sorry, I use the other color, so maybe you can see that. Okay, equals to, okay, so I write down the formula, huh? Okay, you see, so if I am using this formula to find this, what will happen is, uh, okay, I think it's totally fine. Let's put this aside. We try to use the first method, then after that, I will, uh, I will, you will see how complicated is that, then you will feel like you don't want to use that. Okay, so maybe we go to the method one first by using what we have here. Okay, so question one. Find the variance and the standard deviation for the each of the following set of the data. So we use method one, which is this. Okay, so if I want to find out the variance, then the first thing that I need to do is find out the mean first, like what I've done just now. Mean equals to... So I have 9 plus 10 plus 11, plus 13, plus 14, plus 15. What's my ruler? Uh, yeah. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, divide by 6, and you will be getting uh, 12. Okay? So, uh, yeah. 72 divided by 6 equals to 12. Okay, so after you get this, then after that, what do you need to do? So, when you want to find the variance, it's actually equals to sum of x, minus the mean square divided by n. 
Okay, so let's see what's the thing that you need to do. Sum of every observation minus your mean square. So meaning what do you need to do? First data is 9. So meaning 9 minus 12 square. Okay, 9 is my first observation minus 12 is my mean square. That continue goes for the second one. Plus, because sum off, right? So I need to plus. 10 minus 12 square plus 11 minus 12 square plus 13 minus 12 square plus 14 minus 12 square plus 15 minus 12 square. Yeah, you get the idea? So this is what is that mean by every observation minus the mean square and you need to plus them all together. So divided by the n that you are having, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 6. After that, you need to use your calculator to count everything up. Then you will be getting the answer. Oops, I didn't write down my square here also. Okay, uh, yeah, let me just count it. Okay, so 3 square, 2 square, 1 square, 1 square, 2 square, 3 square. So I get 28 divided by 6, which will give me 4.67. So that is my variance. Then if I want to find standard deviation, and I will use this answer to put in a square root, and I will get 2.16. So this is how do I find the variance and standard deviation. So you can realize that it's actually a very long process. So the question is, can we try to do the other equation instead of using this? Okay, so now let's go back to this example to find the second formula here. Okay, so it's totally fine if you cannot understand this part, the, uh, the, the, the process of how you derive the formula. But if you can understand, then yeah, very good. Okay, so let's try to do this. For this question, right, if I'm going to write everything out, then what will it be? So 0, 2, 5, 7, and 11. So if I'm going to use this, that means that I'm actually doing 0 minus 5, square correct and then I will do plus 2 minus 5 square plus 5 minus 5 square plus 7 minus 5 square plus 11 minus 5 square I'm using the formula just now to use this all observation to minus the mean the, the, the mean which is 5 okay so 0 minus 5 square 2 minus 5 square 5 minus 5 square 7 minus 5 squares 11 minus 5 square then I divided by what's the value here is uh, I have 5 value okay correct okay so after that what we try to do is let's try not to find out the numerical answer let's try to expand this Okay, so 0, when you expand it and you times them together, then you are getting 0 square, right? Then you will minus 2 times 0 times 5, and then plus 5 square, correct? When you expand this. Okay, second one, then what you will do? Plus 2 square minus 2 times 2 times 5, and then you plus 5 square again. Okay, then we go to the next one. It will be 5 square minus 2 times 5 times 5 and then plus 5 square. So I'm not going to continue it. It's going to be like the same thing for 7 and 11 and then divided by 5. Okay, now let's try to not like factorize but we're trying to arrange everything that we have here. So you imagine if I also write the same thing for 7 and 11. Okay, then what happened? Okay, let's try to arrange it. I have 0 square, 5 square, eh, sorry, 0 square, 2 square, 5 square. I'm going to circle it with orange color. This one, this one, and uh, this one. Okay, if I continue to write, then it will be 7 square and 11 square, right? So I'm going to put them together in one bracket. 2 square. 5 square, 
7 square, 11 square. Okay, that's the first part. The second one, what do I have? I have this set. Which I used to minus. Okay, so, uh, okay, maybe I change this color so you can see it. Okay, minus 2. Okay, so yeah, everything is multiplied by 2, right? So factorize it, you are getting 2. Then after that, you can realize that it's 0, 2, 5, 7, 11 again. And what is that number? So it's going to be 0, 2, 5, 7, and 11 again. Then after that, how many 5 you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then after that, so every time it's like you times the same thing, which is 5. Is that alright? So it's like the same thing if I like, okay, uh, again, if I try to expand this, then what do I get? 2 times 0 times 5, correct? And then 2 times 2 times 5. And then 2 times 5 times 5, which is this, then the next one, 2 times 7 times 5, the next one, 2, 11, 5, the last one. Okay, so this is the factorized form. Okay, then after that, let's look at the last one, which is this one, this one, and this one. So, when you try to imagine, right, so you can see everything is like 5 square, 5 square, 5 square. So, if I continue to write that for this term and this term, it's going to be 5, 5 square. Is that okay? Last, 5, 5 square. Okay? So now I have everything already, then I divide by 5. Okay, so now let's think of a way how do we change all this into numerical form. What does that mean by 0 square plus 2 square plus 5 square? So you can see it's basically every observation, you square them, then after that, you plus them all together. So that's why when I change it, then I'll be writing sum of x squared, correct? My observation, everything I squared, then I plus them all together. Then minus, okay, 2. Then now look at this. You have 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 11. So what is all this number? It's actually your observation, you plus them together. So sum of x. Is that alright? Okay, 5, what is the 5 from your value here? It's your main. So... Yeah, put a bracket because you are not going to plus them all together, right? So it's like x bar. Okay, that's the mean, sorry. Okay, then after that, plus. So the same thing, the 5 here. Oh, maybe this example is not very good for you to like look at because I have the same n and the same uh, mean. It's okay, later uh, if you... If you want, you can try to do this whole process again by using this number because you have a different mean and a different n. Because for this one, you have the mean is 5, the number of value is also 5, yeah. But yeah, I'm so sorry, but then yeah, the idea will be the same lah. Okay, so the n here is 5. And then the 5 square here is actually for the mean. Okay, then you divide by what is the n here is basically 5. Uh, 5, yeah, it's your n lah. Okay, so now let's try to think of a way for us to simplify that. Okay, so you will be having, so let's try to move everything into different, what is that called? Different fraction. So the first one, I will have sum of x squared divided by n minus 2 sum of x mean divided by n and then plus n x bar square divided by n. Okay, so when I do this, right, this is the part that I cannot do anything already, then I'll straight away write this. Okay, for this part, what I'm going to do is, let's try to change this. Minus, I'll put the two mean in front first. Then after that, I'll put this fraction up. So, like this. Okay, I'm still getting the same thing. Uh, this one is like multiply that. Okay, I get the same thing. Then I plus. So you can see that's the same n and n here. So I can just uh, eliminate it. 
So I'll get x bar squared. Okay? Will be equals to, so now, sum of x squared divided by n minus 2 mean. So total of observation divided by how many observations that you have, what is that? When you look at this one, do you feel like very familiar? Yeah, it's basically the formula for mean. Right? Sum of x divided by n, then plus mean square equals to, okay, can you see that? Yeah, okay, the last part. Okay, so now you see mean times mean, then you are getting mean square also. So negative 2 mean square plus mean square, meaning you are getting minus mean square. So that's why sum of x square over n minus mean square. So this is how the second formula comes from. So add in your formula. So you have the second formula, like second method. It totally means the same thing, which is sum of x squared divided by n minus mean square. Okay, so the same thing go for your standard deviation. Let's try to square root it. Okay, x squared divided by n minus mean square. Okay, then after that, for this one, it's going to be the exactly the same thing, but then for the x squared part, you need to times the f. Okay, so for this one, same thing, just put a uh, square root. Okay, I repeat again, it's totally fine if you can't get this part. So yeah, if you can get it, then very good. So if you can't, then the idea is that uh, you just make sure that you know how to use this. Okay, so uh, in your uh, A-level exam, uh, all of this formula will be given, but they won't give you for the variance. They only give you the standard deviation, so you know that the... Variance is basically the exact formula without the square root. Lah. Is that alright? So meaning like in the exam for the formula sheet, right? They will give you, uh, they won't write this, but they will give you like standard deviation equals to this, standard deviation equals to this. So if you want to find the variance, then you just ignore the square root part. So then after that, you will get the answer ready. Okay, so now let's try to do this method, this question again, but using a uh, second method, then you will realize like the second formula is actually much more easier. Okay, so since we already get the mean already, so we are not going to repeat that. So if you want to write again, then you can write again. Lah. Yeah, but the idea is 12. Okay, so now let's try to use the second formula that we actually derived. Sigma square, okay, which is my variance, equals to sum of x square over n minus mean square. So equals to, so sum of x square, meaning all the data here, I will square it. Okay, square all my number. Divide by how many n I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 and then minus the mean. So like just by looking at this and this then you can realize how much difference is that then uh, normally just use this one lah. If the question didn't like that is if there is no anything that actually specify that you must use this equation that everything that you use uh, you want to find variance, just go on for this one. Don't need to use the first method. So the first method is like the the original formula which makes you like understand what variance is but in terms of application then the second equation will be like much more easier. So equals to then you try to get your answer so everything you use your calculator so 9 square plus 10 square plus 11 square 13, 14, 15. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So 8, 9, 2 divided by 6 and then plus, sorry, minus 144. 
Okay, so you use your calculator, you shall be getting 4.67. Okay, which gives me a standard deviation, which is square root of my answer. I will get 28. Do I do something wrong? Uh, 8, 9, 2, 2, 1, 6, 1, 6. Okay, 4 point, then yeah, I'll get 2.16. Okay, so that's the second method. Okay, now we'll be looking at the other question. Okay, so by using the same thing. <coughs> okay, so this is the table. Okay, so I'm not going to show the method one again. Uh, okay, maybe I'll just write it out, but if you want to count it like, with your calculator, then you can. Yeah. Uh, of course, you can try it out, but yeah, the method two will be much more easier for us to do. Okay, so let's move on. So, yeah, method one. Okay, same thing, you need to try to find out your volume. Uh, volume blah. You need to find out your mean first. Okay, so sum of x times f divided by sum of f. Okay, so 0 times 5 plus 1 times 10 plus 2 times 22 plus 3 times 6 plus 4 times 5 plus 5 times 2. Divide by total frequency. Okay, so you shall be getting a mean of 2.04. <coughs> Alright, okay, then after that, uh, yeah, sorry, I'll write down the for, for you. Okay, in case you cannot get the answer, then you check which one is wrong. Okay, so after that, let's move on for the variance part. So if you are using method 1, then you are using this one. Okay, so what you need to do is every value you need to minus your mean. So again, your is your data minus your mean. It's not your frequency, okay? So your data here is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, oh, sorry, this is a table. So you should use the group data. So you have an F here. Okay, so this is sum of F, sorry. Okay, so every data minus the mean plus 1 minus, oh, sorry, so, ah, okay, it's okay, I forgot the F, okay, so 0 minus 2.04 square, and you need to times your F, okay, because you have 5 distance of this, yeah, because you have 5 value, then of course you, of course you have 5 distance for the observation to, from the main, so plus, you do the same thing, 1 minus 2.04 square, then frequency 10, plus 2 minus 2.04 square, then 22. Can you continue yourself until the end? Okay, then divide by your total frequency. So 5, so plus 10 plus 22, or you use the 50 here, like it's the same plus 6, plus 5, plus 2. Okay? So you try to count it, then you will be... Uh, okay, don't forget the last part, okay? Minus the mean. So, oops, I don't have any space, but yeah. Minus the mean. If you want to be more accurate, then you write down this answer rather than this. Oh, but I think this one is totally fine because, yeah, it's exact. Okay, square equals 2. Sorry, it's a little bit messy. I hope you can get it. So this is the part for here. Then, yeah, here I also forget to write it. Okay, you copy down from the formula that you have written. Then after that, this part is basically the in front, the front part. Oops, I'm very sorry. If we use the first method, then there's no... There's no the second part. Yeah, correct. So just like that. Yeah. I'm like very confusing myself. Okay. 
yeah it's correct already so just like that then after that what do you need to do is you need to uh plus everything together then you will be getting 1848 divided by 25 and then the whole thing divide by 50 I think this is the number that actually in decimal then uh, for me to get a more accurate answer I didn't write it in decimal I just write it in the fraction form okay then you should be getting 1.48 Four seven eight four something like this okay so for me to find my standard deviation then I'll be using this answer to do square root so my standard deviation will be equals to 1.22 is that okay try it out sorry I hope that I don't confuse you yeah just follow the formula I'm correct for the first time but I confuse myself that I need to minus off the mean but I don't need to okay so that's not this part you just continue to write it up up to the last data okay so method two so this is much more easier so we use the same mean which I'm not going to continue uh, repeat that so second method Variance equals to sum of x squared divided by n minus mean square. Okay, then after that, what I will be getting equal to. Okay, so every observation square and I plus all the observation together. So sorry, did I forgot something? Uh, yes, I did. I forgot the f again. So f f. Okay, so yeah, don't forget if you have a table, then you need to use this. But yeah, when you try to write it down, then you will realize that you actually write down something wrong. Okay, so yeah, every observation you square, then you times your frequency. So 0 squared times 5 plus 1 squared times 10 plus 2 squared times 22. Okay observation square and then times the frequency plus 3 square 6 4 square 5 5 square 2 then divide everything and then oops there's no ink okay then after that I have a number of 50 okay the 50 the same end for your uh, mean Okay, minus your mean 2.04 square. Okay, then after that, you will get 282 divided by 50 minus 2.04 square, which will give you the exactly same thing like the above. And the standard deviation equals to square root that number, which gives you 1.22 or so. Okay, is that all right? Yeah, I hope you can see that I'm going to change my calendar back. Okay, so yeah, let's move on for the last part. Okay, so this one is the data with a class interval. So what you need to do is the same thing because this is a class. So that's why what do you need to do is you need to find out your midpoint first. So 51 to 55, then you plus them together, divide by 2, then you get 53. 56 plus 60, divide by 2, you get 58. 61 divide plus 65, divided by 2, 63, then 68, and then 73. Okay, so after you have find this, then you can do the exact process that we did just now. So it's the same thing since we already tried both, so that's why. Uh, every time when you want to find variance, so just use the second one. But you cannot ignore the first one because some of the questions you, uh, you might force to use that. Okay, so yeah, let's try out with the second method. Okay, so for, uh, write down the formula first. XF, F, then it will give me... 4 times 53, 7 times 58, 9 times 63, 
sixteen times sixty eight twenty four times seventy three okay divide by total frequency equals to four zero two five divide by sixty equals to six seven point zero eight okay then after that continue with variance copy down your equation sum of x square over n minus mean square okay equals to so observation square data square so 53 square 58 square 63 square 68 square 73 square okay divide by how many number do i have so it's the same thing like here so 60 minus of my mean okay so using your calculator you will be getting 272385 divided by 60 2723 385 okay and then minus 67.08 square then you will be getting 40.02 okay and your standard deviation is the number then you put a square root then after that you will be getting 6.33 okay is that good i hope that you can like roughly understand Okay, I just want to add up a few things. So for the variance and the standard deviation, right, when we read about the definition just now, the variance is actually said that the square difference for the distance between the observation and the mean. Okay, so you can see what happened here is like if I have a set of value and this is my mean, right? Okay, so if I have a big variance or we say big standard deviation, What does that mean? It actually means that maybe this is my mean, then the distance between, so maybe this will be all my uh, data. So it's like very far away from my mean. So if I have a big standard deviation, it means that my data is actually like spreading very widely. So it's like the data is spread widely. Yeah. So mean like the maximum or the minimum of the data is like very far away from each other for the mean. So if this is my mean, then maybe my data is like this. Yeah. So what you can see is like all the distance between all my value is like very near to my mean. Then I will have a small standard deviation. So if I have a standard deviation, then what does that mean? It actually means that the data spread. Uh, I don't know how to write that in words, but it's basically like the data spread is like more narrower. Okay, so meaning that it's like closer to the mean. So what does that mean if we want to say in terms of consistency? So meaning for this value, the value are like very far away from each other or like from the mean itself. But for small standard deviation, meaning that they are very close to the sen uh, to the mean, so that's why we say that for this kind of the data, it's actually more consistent. Okay, so you can try to write down or draw this out in your notes part for the standard deviation. Okay, so uh, when you look click to your next page, I have three questions for you to practice. Then I yeah, you can try to pause your video now and then uh, you try it out yourself or you can take this time to actually write down your answer beside then after that when you do it then you check okay so now i'm going to teach something that you will like it very much which is how to use calculator to do this uh okay i'm so sorry i mean i only have five seven oes with me so for people that you are using the 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 the, the 
lower is not like the lower the other version is like it's like five seven oh that one so perhaps you uh i'll i touch i'll try to find online the other video that maybe teach you how to do this then after that try to refer to that uh to that video yeah because i only have one here then i can't go out so i cannot get the other calculator so yeah uh you might need to check it out for other calculator video so for those who are using not using this tool, then you might need to go online to search it yourself. Okay, so let's try to do like with the question that we actually did just now. Okay, so this is the number C. Okay, so I try to clear everything first. <coughs> okay, look at this question, the one that we actually did just now. I need to... Okay, I hope that you can see the calculator clearly. Ah, okay, nice. Okay, now what do you need to do is for this type of question which is ungrouped data, then you press mode, okay, then you press tree statistic, ignore this part, then you just press AC. So after you press this, your calculator should be coming out something like stat up there. Is that okay? Okay, so after you do this right, then what do you need to do? Shift, then press 1. Then after that, go to 2, data, which you need to put in your data now, 2. Then you will see a table like this, which like 1, 2, 3, then X. Okay, meaning that you need to key in your data. So 1 mean like the first number, 2 like second number and so on. So in this case, I'm going to key in 9, 10, 11, okay, just follow this, 13, 14, 15, is that okay? So after I key in right, then what do I press? You press AC again, okay? So when you press that, the calculator actually already programmed it, so you are getting like to here, then after that you press AC, okay? Then you clear everything, okay, so now what do you do? Shift again. Then after that, press 1. Okay, so you have different type here. So let's explore the function for 3 first. So you see there's 3 for sum. So you press 3. It will come out these two things. Okay, so let's try to do the mean. Okay, so mean is basically the sum of your observation that you divide by n, right? So how do you get the 72 here? So you press 2 and press equal. So you see 72, which is this number. Okay, then after that, I go out again, shift, 1 again, then I press uh, 4, okay, Var like the variance like actually 4, then you see the n, x bar, and then sigma, and then s. Okay, so 1 is your how many number you have, so 6. So it's basically how we get 72 and 6. But of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you just count out. Like, why not you ca use calculator to do that? Okay, but then you can uh, do your mean, like check your mean here. So which is you will be getting 4. Okay, again, then go to 2, which is your mean. Equal to, then they'll give you the answer 12. Is that okay? Alright, so the next one, we go on to the variance. Okay, but for the variance part, the calculator is using the second formula. They are not using the first formula. So if you want to use calculator to help you to like write out the answer, then you better use the second formula also. Yeah. Okay, again, uh, if you want to use calculator, right, make sure that you are just using it to check. So meaning that for all this important value, you actually, it's good if you can write it out. Okay, so now let's check for this part. So you remember just now when we press the sum, right? You actually have the other one, which is the sum of x squared, which is what we want exactly for the variance. So 1, so you see 8, 2, 8, 9, 2, which is 8, 9, 2 here. Can you see that? Okay, then after that, the number I know it to press already, 6, then 12 squared. Then, after that, how do I check for my standard deviation? Shift, 1, so variance also. Okay, so you see number 3 and 4. Okay, 3 and 4, 
is basically all for variance but for the 3 is going to be variance for sample for 4 is going to be variance for population so you are not going to use 4 again I repeat you are not going to use 4 so just use 3 so because like the sigma is basically the symbol for your standard deviation 3 equals 2 then you are getting 1 2.16 can you see that okay so when you square this number you are actually getting your variance so this is how you check your answer yeah i hope you can get the idea okay so for students that you use the other calculator so please go to the other video to check it out okay so for all this question please try it out like check the value here or you use your calculator to check it also all right to practice that you know how to use it okay so it's settled later we are going to look at some example that we uh, finish this lesson okay i'm sorry i think i forget uh, one of the part which is uh, how do we use calculator to do if you have a table okay so uh, yeah it's just going to be a very small part Okay, so it's the same thing, but the idea is just now when we look at the data, right? So you are having only the data column. So instead of doing this, then what do we need to do is you need to go shift mode. Okay, so it will come out something like this. Then you just press down. Then you can see that's the other statistic here. So, okay, the first step that we press is like only from mode. So it's like a tree here. So now the difference is that you press shift mode. Is that alright? Then after that you go to stat 4. Then you press 4. So they will ask you like whether the frequency on or off. So meaning that uh, if you use the method just now right. Uh, actually if you don't want to press like sh uh, mode 3. Then you, you press shift mode. Then go to 4. You are still getting to the same place. So if you want the page like that happen like just now then you do off so if you want to put in frequency like we have a table here then you put on is that okay then after that shift one then go to data then what you can realize here is you have the new table here which is you have x and you have frequency also so let me try to type in this okay so for the you can type in the x first zero one two three four five okay then after that you need to key in your frequency so make sure that it's tally okay so the frequency is going to be five six oh, sorry ten and then twenty two six five two okay so after you press that again press ac then shift one then let's check the sum first okay two so you can see one zero two Okay, which is the sum of your observation and then shift 1 go to 4 1 then you see how many number you have is 50 so 102 divided by 50 is correct then shift 1 then variance so you press 2 you check your to check your mean so 2.04 so it's correct 2.04 okay then after that let's go on to the variance part so sum and then 1, and then when you have this, then 282, so you see 282, okay? Then divide by the number, la. so shift 1, and then variance, then you press 3, so this is your answer for your standard deviation, so your standard deviation here, okay? So 1.22 is correct also, so you square your answer and you'll be getting the variance, okay? So that's the part for the calculator. So next one we'll be moving to some example that we end.